The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Hey, are you heathens? Welcome back to Vibe in the Apocalypse. I'm your host, the Fresh King Benjamin. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been on, um, but it is spring now, and it's day 1,470 of the apocalypse, and so we are back. I have a really great, good friend on. We're going to talk about uh, the apocalypse today. But before I jump into that, I just want to let you know, if you are a local listener, if you're in the Salt Lake area, I have an upcoming show for comedy on April 7th. So on April 7th, I'm going to be on a show called Comedy Church, which is a really hilarious show where it's like a it's like a, a fake church that's also comedy. And we're going to be getting together and talking about the law of chastity, which is a very important law that keeps people from fucking each other. And so we're going to talk about that. If you uh, want to come to that show, you totally should. And you can actually get a little, I'm going to just share this, my screen really quick, because you can get, oh, I don't want that. That's like a, if you come to this website, marketevents.com slash E slash D6 E F I W O U one N. They need to do a much better job on their marketing so that they have a better website, but they're still new. They're working on it. Sunday, April 7th, 7.30 p.m. at the Redemption Bar and Grill in Harriman, Utah. And if you use the code Benjamin, tickets are $10, it's a steal. But if you use the code Benjamin, you get 20% off, which is like double tithing. So you you can come for just $8, which is insane. So definitely come to that. And, and that's my, my announcement. Now, jumping back into our interview. So I want to just welcome my my good friend, Stephanie Lucas. Stephanie, welcome to the show. Would you want to tell listeners a little bit about you? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so excited for this conversation. So my name is Stephanie Lucas. I live here in lovely Austin, Texas. And yeah. Representing um, my Austin sweatshirt today. So good. So I am in the insurance and financial services space. So very much in the matrix a very dense industry. So operating in that space is quite interesting when you're super witchy and like spiritual and very different than how it operates. Yeah, you're kind of a walking contradiction because because on the one hand, insurance, finance space, like brilliant in that, crushing it. And then on the other hand, like I've been to your house. I have never been to a more witchy place in my life. I love it. Like you've got crystals everywhere. Your cat is like a reincarnated someone. Like you are, you are legit. You're literally wearing a pendant right now. And I've done some cool witch. You have a, you have a shed in your house, a she shed yeah. where you do witchy things with, and you've done, we pulled brooms in that shed and it like changed my life. So it was a it was pretty, it's a pretty magical moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so curious about but before we kind of get into the into the conversation, I'm curious about did the did you start witchy or did you start in this sort of matrix area? And how did you how did you go from this, like you said, deep in the matrix? Like I can't think of anything more tied into the old world that's sort of crumbling than the financial industry. So how did you go from that into this into this witchy place? Yeah, so interesting. Um I was very buttoned up you know, corporate, very, you know, wearing my suits and like cute little outfits and very conformative and extremely driven. And I was at it. Like that industry, when you're out at events and all of these things, you're drinking a lot. There are other things available. (laughs) And I found myself, by the time I was 32, I was making more money than I had ever made. And I was living in Del Mar, California, you know, San Diego on the west side of the freeway. Is the west side the good side? I don't yeah. know anything about San Diego. It is like you're over by the beach. And oh, hell yeah. One of the most expensive areas to be in. And so you were rich and so you were obviously totally happy. Oh, I was fucking miserable, <laughs> right? And I was constantly drinking and I would, you know, plan my time around like, you know, working 18 hours a day. Then I'd be like, I need to drink. And I'm very like functional alcoholic and addict. And about 
11-ish years ago, I got sober. And when I got sober, and it was actually like when the Mayan calendar ended. So No like, way. Oh, that's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. I wasn't into any of this, right? I, I did not meditate. I did not, I was not connected to nature. I was not connected to my body. I was like, I don't even know, like out there. And so I, when I got sober is when I finally like found spirituality again. We'll touch on this like very briefly because I did come from a fundamentalist, like poly not polygamist, but a, a cult. Yeah. You know, all of, all of my, all of my best friends have some kind of cult background. Yeah. Yeah. And I was very young, but because of that experience and how it impacted like my older siblings and stuff and like how we were forced to go to church, like after the cult. Yeah. And, like I really rejected sort of reacted against that. Yes, I rejected, um, God, I rejected anything around like spirituality. And mm -hmm. so I understand that there was like a huge difference between organized religion that's trying to control you and yeah. spirituality and being connected to all that is in nature and like, you know, and, yeah. and so came the I love that. That that's so that's so interesting because I I think that there's so many I think there are so many people like you and like me who have had who have gone through sort of a similar journey of being in a very restrictive spiritual place, cult, cultish, cult-like. And then we sort of reject that. And we kind of, and in the rejection of that, we're sort of like, we're like, oh, all, all spiritual. We kind of like throw the baby out with the bathwater. And we're like, we're just going to do science and real shit, right? And I'm grateful for my experience doing that because it, it did feel like it sort of grounded me, right? It sort of landed me in, in this reality. And, and then I also think too that like, Humans have been spiritual. We have been believers for hundreds of thousands of years, way yeah. before we had organized religion, way before we had Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or any formal religion. We were animists. We were spiritual. We believed in, in nature. We communed with spirits, right? Yeah. And so I think that in, in a large part, that is who we are and that's sort of baked into our brain. I think that our our operating system is a spiritual operating system and I think that's one of the reasons why right now there's sort of this interesting like you have you see a lot of people joining cults. You see a lot of people going back to religion and I think it's because the modern scientific world for all of the great things that it's done like our ability to talk you're in Austin, I'm in Utah magic. I love that. Thank you, science. But it hasn't done a great job of giving us an internal operating system for how to live life, like how to live life well. It's it's left it a little barren. So I'm kind of interested to, I think that's going to be a lot of what we talk about today. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's my life, right? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So growing up, you you mentioned you kind of had a, a little bit of a kind of a, like mo mostly your older siblings as a cult background. You you react against that. Did you have any kind of conception of the apocalypse like pre-COVID? Yes. Okay. So, you know, all of my life after seven years old, when we actually had TV, there's always been this like zombie, you know, yeah. thing. Yeah. And as I grew up, it was sort of like I was seeing this happen around me where like people were heavily medicated and, you know, constantly drinking and they were like numb and dumb and easier to control. And so I feel like the zombie apocalypse was like slowly like like put into society like oh, yeah. decades ago. You know, yeah. it, it wasn't Convid that created this apocalypse, but now it's like very much like in your face very, very aware. And, you know, it wasn't like sprinkled into the water. It was like, I'm going to punch you in the face with it. Right. We're going to, we're going to shake the entire world and say, Hey, by the way. Yeah. World's different now. Yeah. 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 Like look what kind of control we do have. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yes. When I, I love to that, that, like one of the things that I think is kind of going back to maybe zeitgeist or sort of this, this spirituality that's sort of underneath everything that's happening 
is that I, I think it's really fascinating that, that the, all, that we had so many stories about the apocalypse, like the zombie apocalypse, the Mad Max apocalypse, like so for, for, for decades, we've been sort of telling those stories kind of prepping our minds for something like that. And, and I think too, that like, I also think about the, the, the advent of like, it seems like, a, I don't know what cult, what, what cult were your parents a, a part of? Do you know? Like five-star Pentecostal. So it's a very strict Christian sect. Did they handle like snakes? Uh, no. No. I'm like, people get who, are, who are the snake came? I thought they were Pentecostals. Well, they didn't do anything cool. Damn it. Yeah. They wore like, you know, they, they were sort of like the long, you know, plain dress. With bonnets. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonnets. Okay. Yeah. Oh my, you, your people and my people would have fit in. They would have, because when we kind of got kicked out, they went and found a Mennonite church. Oh, no way. Yeah. And the Mennonites were like, we don't want you. (laughs) So then they went and found like a normal Christian church. And then we went to this like Christian school and, you know, that. Anyway. You know that you're extreme when the Mennonites are like, he's. Yeah, we don't want you. No, thank you. It might have had to do like a little bit with the, you know, I had six brothers at the time. So yeah. Unruly children. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'll that'll do it. Yeah. They're like, yeah. To you. I think I think it's fascinating that so so the the cult that I grew up in, Mormonism, right? That starts in the 1830s. JW started in the 1830s, Seventh day Adventist. There's so many cults that kind of go back to like right like 1830s, 1840s America. And then they sort of, they sort of for generations, like I'm a, I'm the seventh generation Mormon in my family, which feels all sorts of powerful. And like, literally like my, my ancestor came to America, his grant, his son joined the Mormons. And then seven generations later, I pop out and I'm like, fuck this Mormon shit. And, and I know so many people like you and like a, a lot of my friends from multiple, from a bunch of different cults who have done that. and who have sort of, they, they've been in the cult for, for years. It sort of created a certain kind of human and then they've sort of stepped out. They've, they've rejected that. And I think that's kind of, I think that's kind of magical because I think that's actually created a certain kind of human who is sort of ready to, to thrive and to sort of do really well in this new post-apocalyptic world where, because we're, 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 we're grounded in reality we're skeptical. We're, we're willing to like think deeply. We're willing, like it's, it doesn't bother me to think about the, like, I, I think about America, some like the American government sometimes as very much a cult. And, and that doesn't scare me that. Cause I'm like, look, I know what cults are. Uh-huh. I, I've thought my way out of like, it's, it's a norm. It feels like a normal thing to do. And it also feels really important because there's, there's a lot of, we need that kind of thinking today. Like we need people who are willing to challenge the status quo, who are willing to live their authentic lives in a, in a way that's powerful, that, that, that relies on themselves as the source of their authority and intuition that, that really brings humans back and make, lets humans human again. And that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about talking to you is that you've done a lot of work and you're really good at humaning. So I want to just kind of turn it over to you and, and just like teach me a little bit how how do you think, what are some things that you think that are important for us to do in this kind of post-apocalyptic, this new, this rapidly changing world? How do we make this world into a more human world? And how do we take control and power back in our own lives? Oh man, there's so many things. I do want to start really with your own being sovereign in your own body, right? We are given so much in this world, but the most important thing that we have been given is this vessel. And it is our job to nurture it so that as we, you know, grow older, we are doing it in a way that is healthy and vibrant and happy. Yeah. You know, our world is so toxic. And because of the government and the way that this corporation of a country has been set up, everything's about profitability. 
So it doesn't matter if the food that you're being given has chemicals and things that are causing your body to break down, to, you know, become obese, to have diabetes, to it's crazy. It's crazy. Like yeah, all of, ad nauseum. Like the autoimmune issues that exist today is just insane. To me. Yeah, it's wild to me that America is so wealthy. We're so wealthy, and we are so sick. Well, unhealthy. Like that it blows my mind. It's insane. So taking care of yourself is like the biggest, most important thing. And what I mean by that is like. We're not getting the nutrients that we need from the food that we're eating because the soil is so depleted and the, the you know, everything is being raped of all of its resources, right? Yeah. And so, like, the mineral content, the nutrients in the food is so bad that we have to supplement. And so minerals are number one. We do not get enough minerals from the food we eat. And so beam like B-E-A-M, like beam me up, Scotty. Maybe you don't know that reference. No, you... no. Okay. Uh, Star Trek. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Be- okay. that, that's like you like, you like, you get beamed up. I don't, who's Scotty though? Yeah. That's like. Is that like the computer that you like, you like call the computer and it. Star Trek dies. Oh, it's one of the dudes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so beam, B-E-A-M, minerals. They are like the best minerals I have found. And after I started taking those just after a few weeks, I started sleeping better. My body is hydrated better. It holds water better. Like, and I know I do like on a cold plunge regularly. And when I'm sweating, I sweat better. Like there's a difference, right? Beam is beam a brand or is it like, there's an acronym that stands for a certain? It's a brand. Okay. Yeah. Beam minerals. I don't know. Do you do show notes? I would assume you do. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. So hydration, right? If you're drinking water, you need to have remineralized water. What happens if you drink water that has been like purified or you're buying this bottled water that's not remineralized when you drink that water, the water needs minerals. It'll actually take from your body. So it's depleting you from what you need. So you're like draining yourself of, you're like flushing out the things that yeah. you need. Yeah. And also don't drink out of freaking plastic bottles. Like microplastics, what this is doing to your system, the amount of disease that is running rampant in our society, a huge amount of it is because of the microplastics in our body. Like even getting it from some of the food you're eating, it's ridiculous. Turns, um, out, turns out plastics are not just killing turtles. That's right. Plastics were a terror. Like I get why we did it because they're so convenient, but we we really missed the boat on that. And just yeah. thinking about the long term impact of Absolutely. of what we do, right? And and what we like, I think about that all the time. Especially with I don't know if I've talked to you. Have I have, have we talked about Turtle Island? Oh uh, yeah. So so when I think about America, right? I think about Turtle Island, and I think about the like for. Thousands of years, the indigenous peoples of this continent were aware of their impact on the continent. They were aware of, and that they actually had many, many tribes had people who would be, they would, they were given the the job of speaking for future generations, like for 10 years or, or 10 generations, 50 generations in the future. And so they were really aware of that. And, and then white oh, white European culture comes over and is like, oh, what a great resource that we can just exploit immediately. And, and I think that's one of the most important things to bring back into balance in, in this new, like the thing that I hope that we do with this opportunity is to recognize that all of the technology that we have is like, I think, I think Gaia adores humans. I think Gaia thinks we are so clever and so smart. She loves us. And we have to get back to understanding that there's a way for us to be our brilliant, clever technological selves that is deeply in line with, with caring for her. And in fact, that's the only way that we survive because if any civilization that doesn't do that is just, is just going to get, just going to get flushed down the toilet. Yeah. There's going to be another Noah's Ark. Yeah. Yeah. And I won't be able to get on that because I'm so wicked. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know what that looks like, but I probably won't be on it either. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I mean, like really caring for your body and that is built on your self-worth, right? Mm-hmm. When you care so deeply about this vessel, then you start caring about everything outside of you. Yeah. Right? Taking care of your house, the things that you value, your cats, your children. Those are all reflections of how you are doing on the inside. Mm. And like a big thing for me is organic food, right? Like I get that organic food is expensive. So on top of going to the farmer's market, going to regenerative farms, thankfully I have access to those things because I'm in Texas. Austin is pretty great for that. Yeah. It's amazing. But there is actually, there's a website that you can go to to find a regenerative farm in your area. Love this. Yeah. I know I have it in my notes here. It, Farmer's Footprint is like incredible. They put this on It's organicconsumers.org slash regenerative hyphen farm hyphen map. And you can go to that website, put your zip code in, and it'll tell you all the types of regenerative farms in your area. Hang on. Tell me that one more organic. I'm going to just do that right now. Organic. Organicconsumers.org. Consumers.org. Okay. Word slash regenerative. Regenerative. Hyphen farm. Farm. Hyphen forward slash. Oh my God, this is amazing. Yes. Holy cow. So I'm seeing like this whole map of the entire United States. Yeah. Oh, and see, ah, this is what, this is why, even though, even though this is a show about the apocalypse and how everything is breaking and we're all going to die. Yes. It's also, we're not, we're not because we're so clever and we're so aware and we're actually tapped in and we're paying attention. And, and we have all of the tools that like all of the tool, like that, that we need to do this. And just, I want to just share this so that, that people who are watching can see, check, check this out, y'all. Like you jump into here and there are thousands of them all over the place. And so here I am in Utah and bam, there's one, I mean, this is like literally probably 20 minutes from my house. Great. So, so yeah, so I started my own garden. I have like over a hundred square feet of gardening, like raised beds in my backyard. Yeah. And year two. And I, so I, I'm a green witch, right? So plants are the thing, you know, I'm not out casting spells on people and being all decrepit and weird and like doing bad stuff. Everything I do is for the betterment of nature Mm. and people around me and my everything right yeah like, which i i think like that is as i've as i've studied witches as i've gotten to know several witches yeah. what i've realized is that was what witches were the whole time yes like the whole time they were just they were just like women who knew about nature uh-huh. and could use herbs and like the whole broom thing this blew my mind when i learned this that the whole witches on a broom why did witches have brooms because they figured out if you sweep your house, it's cleaner and you don't die. Yes. Well, now I have a Jasper, so I don't have to sweep. Wait, what's a Jasper? It is like the most amazing air purification system on the planet. Oh, no way. Yes. And like it will take allergens, micro everything's out of the, out of the air. And so if you're using a Jasper, you're not getting dust because it sucks it all up. Yeah. So you're, you fly around on a Jasper instead yeah. of, instead of a broom. That's right. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're a green witch. Yeah. And so like gardening is so important, right? So if you can't afford to buy all your stuff organic, learn to garden, get your hands in the dirt. Not mm-hmm. only getting your hands in the dirt is like good for your garden, but it's good for your microbiome in your system yeah it turns out eating dirt is really good for you it is it yeah. is yeah um, that's one of the things that i think is is a little hilarious about my background right because i grew up and i never went to the doctor never got any kind of vaccine like i was i was a literal free range kid we just r- ran around and played in the dirt and 
and I have a pretty strong immune. Like I'm a pretty healthy guy. Yeah. Which is not, like I'm I'm grateful for modern medicine and the, all the ways that it it helps us when we need it. And I think it's also kind of it's the the extreme focus on like purification and like with our water, like you were saying, like nothing in our water. No, we need a little. Like obviously, we don't want cholera in our water, yeah. well, we but should. we we need some dirt. Yes. We need some dirt in our, in our, in our water a little bit. And actually one of the, so when I was at, when I was at Burning Man, my first year, I had this really interesting experience with dirt because over the course of the week, I just got progressively more naked. So beginning of the week, I was like, I was my very strict polygamous self. End of the week, I was butt ass naked. Just wonder, I didn't even care. It was magical. And as I was doing that, what I, what I started to do is instead of like putting sunscreen on at the beginning of the day, which is where I started because the, the sun out there is brutal. I just remembered, I, I would like, remember like these David Attenborough documentaries and like the, the elephants would like throw dirt on them. And I'm like, I'm going to try that. So I like literally just scooped up a bunch of dirt and just rubbed it all over my body. And then I just, and anytime I started to feel like I got a little bit of sun, I just rubbed more dirt on and it worked. Like I did it, I wasn't sunburned. And actually what I started to find was that dirt started to mix with a little bit of sweat. So I had sort of this thin film of like dirt and sweat all over my body. Yeah. And it was actually really, really comfortable. It probably exfoliated a lot too. Oh, I was, my skin was so smooth. So soft. Yeah. So soft. And, and it made me realize, right? Like we are, we, we are animals and we've removed ourselves. We've tried to like remove so ourselves from this, yeah. like, this animal world that we live, but we are just like, we're designed, we're designed to be in the dirt. We're designed yeah. to be a little bit messy. We're designed to kind of have like that. All of this is, is who we are and that we aren't really these hyper clean. Like we, we, we can actually get in, like get in that dirt and eat a little bit of, and it's actually really good for us. It's actually very good for us. Yeah. And it's funny too, because like my, I, I think that our generation maybe is sort of maybe the last generation that's really because my kids are, they, they love gardening. They, they talked me into, cause I, I, I was still very resistant to gardening because of how I grew up. I was like, I don't want to garden. I want to go to a store. But yeah. you were, yeah, you're resisting what you were brought up on. I'm resisting what I, what I was, because it was, cause it wasn't, wasn't fun. Right. But my kids were like, yo, we, they love it. And so they talked me into, they were like, we want to do a garden in our, in our upstairs, like on my, our balcony. I'm like, well, we don't have a garden bed or anything. So one day we were driving, there's like this big abandoned lot behind our house and we were just driving through it and someone had just taken a box spring and thrown it out, like just dumped it there. Oh my God. And we were like, oh, what the, f like assholes, like, why would you do that? And then we looked at it and, and my daughter, my, my oldest daughter was like, we could probably do something with that. And I was like, yeah, we probably could. So we took it, we hauled it back to my house. We, it's up, it's right outside full of dirt. We just filled it with dirt and we planted a bunch of onions last fall. And nice. now they're starting to pop up. So we're going to have a whole bunch of onions that grew in our box spring mattress. <laughs> and it was that easy, right? Like it. And I think that that's where, and what's fun about that too, is that I think that we are, I think we've become really disconnected from food, from where it comes from, from really the magic of like, yeah. of creating it and then have and then pulling it from the earth and then eating it right that's that's who we are mm -hmm. and and i think it's it's a lot more healthy than like a mcdonald's hamburger uh, yes <laughs> it's like it's not gonna cause disease yeah 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 no i i love gardening when i see new things pop up it's so exciting it's mm -hmm. like oh my gosh i did that yeah well, like the earth did that and like the I mean, no. but i help yeah i put that seed there yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So other things that I'm definitely passionate about, about cleaning my own environment is mm -hmm. like having solar energy, doing as much EMF proofing, right? What is EMF proofing? What are, what are EMFs? Gosh, EMF, electromagnetic frequencies. Is that like, that's from screens, Your right? Wi-Fi, that's from all the 5G, like all the things that are happening around us because of the technology that we've created. Yeah. And 
there's scientific evidence of it messing with our cells and like there's cell mutation like so much stuff is happening like there was a study that was done from somebody using a cell phone where like their beta waves in their brain just went like crazy because they had their phone up next to their yeah right i can feel that right like when i because i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty sensitive to like like energy like i can feel it in my hands especially and when i if i'm holding my phone for a significant amount of time it's hot yes and i feel like it's hot and i feel that energy like getting sucked into my into my hands exactly and so i have like a i don't have it up here but i have like a a big old obsidian ball that if i if i've been using my phone for a little while i'll just hold that and it's cold and yeah it feel it feels it feels like it's sucking it out yeah yeah, I also have. I think this is. I've got this right in front of me on my on my computer. Uh, I think this, this is. Yeah, tongue. Yeah, so shungai is like a good absorber of EMF. So mm-hmm. I actually have a. I have an, a case. I can't reach it, but it's like a super sparkly fun shungai case that's on my cell phone. Oh, rad! And so that's one way of helping with that. But then I also have this service called QuantumUpgrade.io, and it's beaming quantum energy into the phone to help reduce the emf oh rad and i have it in my house so it's reducing the emfs and then i also have these devices that are plugged into the wall and then this this little one here it's like calm your body calm the body and it's yeah. uh, go sanctuary this is from it's earth calm that's another website where you can get these different devices for emf reduction like you can't get cell phone service inside my house unless you're using my Wi-Fi. Oh, that's rad. <laughs> At night, I turn it off while I'm sleeping because it's like, okay, I don't want that stuff all running and I'm turning everything off in the house because it's interrupting your sleep pattern. Yeah. I think that that seems like such a great idea. Like, like even just with the, just the disconnecting from the constant pings, yes. like the constant of like, we're, we're so it's wild to me sometimes when I think about how we used to like text messaging used to be years. Like we used to like write a person a letter yes, and then, and then literally just hand it to someone and say, here, and je- somewhere in that direction is, is the person yes, that this right. needs to go to. Can you get it to them? Right. And so there's this, there was this space, I think, that we had in our lives that we don't have. And there are, there are, there's nice things about that, right? Like, it's nice to be able to instantly text my, my kids and to know exactly where they are all yes. the time, right? That, there's a plus to that. Yes. And there's a cost to that. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. But yeah, so technology, there's so much greatness about it. And then there is so much that's damaging to our cellular, like down to your cellular level, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people aren't even aware of it. It it blows my mind how much uh, like unawareness is happening around yeah. what we're doing to this planet. Yeah, which is a bummer. It is such a bummer. Like even the frequency of the planet's changing because of what we're doing. Like the Schumann resonance doesn't even happen all the time anymore. I don't even know what the Schumann resident resonance is. Tell me what that is. Oh my gosh. So it's like the vibration that the earth is emitting. And that is like the, I can't think of what the Hertz is, but you could, you could go on like Spotify and just put in Schumann resonance and like get a playlist of like these vibrations and they're healing vibrations. You can put in like earth healing vibrations or something like this, but frequencies we're we are like energy, right? Right. And so frequencies are going to affect us, whether it's a negative or a positive, mm-hmm. right? And so like you find that in music, like whatever they decide to use in music could be a negative or a positive, you know, impact. Well, and I just Googled Schumann resonance and it's, it's showing like it's part of the, the Earth's electromagnetic field spectrum, right? So the Earth itself is this energetic thing, right? It's shooting out all of these. And, and the fact that we are, I'm, I'm continually blown away how powerful like 
the little creatures that, that are us are, right? That we can impact things on, on that level. Like literally right behind my house over here, there's a whole mountain. There's a mountain that is getting eaten by humans as they mine it away for copper, right? Every day, yes. a little bit less mountain, right? And, and the, like the fact that we're, we're get like, we're just blasting these radiate, these frequencies. And we don't know the long-term impact of that. Like cell phones, we've had cell phones for like 20 years, for like 30 years. That's not a very long time. No. Especially when you think about the, the, the length of time that like it's taken for like how long nature moves, right? Nature moves in millions of years yeah. right yeah and over millions of years it creates ego it creates all this balance and then we can kind of come in so quickly and tip that yeah in in disastrous ways right like we're in the middle of that's where we're at right now like we're in the middle of one of uh, they're they're calling it the sixth great extinction we are yep. we are slaughtering life on this planet yep. on an unprecedented scale cool. and and it's really only within like the last 200 years. Yeah. Well, a, a huge problem is that we've traded, you know, our health and the, the like nature thriving for convenience. Yeah. Right? Like, for instance, the microwave. You totally. Know, the microwave is the worst invention ever. It, it literally kills the nutrients of the food that you're warming up. So you're just like shoveling nothing in your mouth so but it's really hot nothing really hot nothing that got that got in my mouth really fast and there's one in every almost every house in america at least yeah when i've traveled there's not always a microwave but there's a lot of we we have lots and 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 what's wild to me too is that it's not even like the level of convenience is not we're so fixated on convenience because a microwave is not that much more convenient than like an air fryer. No. And that's the thing. It's like it's literally taking the nutrients out of your food and radiating you. So like go ahead and poison yourself and not get any. <laughs> really. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. And and go so fast like that that you're not actually slowing down appreciating the food, smelling the food, right? Like cooking used to be such a, such a, such a process, right? Such a get, like we'd get together and we would do it together and we'd, we'd smell it and it would like, all of this stuff would happen. And, and now we're just like, oh, as quickly as we can, like, yeah. let's get that out of the way. Like, let's, let's eat as quickly as we possibly can. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like cooking is an art form in and of itself. Totally. You no. Know? And when I can take ingredients and make it beautiful with the colors of the different vegetables and like, yeah. well, you know, putting these flavors together and yeah. I imagine when I'm, when I sit down and cook, I imagine sometimes that I'm, that I'm, that I'm like, it's a, my witch's cauldron, yes. like it's my little warlock's cauldron. And I'm putting in like putting in turmeric and I'm like, this turmeric does this thing and put some sage and this sage does this and maybe it does and maybe it doesn't, but the intention of like, it does. Yeah. And, but the, it, it's like the, the intention of I'm, I'm creating this thing and I'm doing it with love and I'm doing it for my kids and I'm doing it for myself. And then we sit down and we eat it. And yeah. that's a different experience than like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to throw in a microwave pizza. Yeah, exactly. Or I'm going to go to Chili's. Or I'm going to go to Chili's right. or Applebee's. Oh, my God. And then I'm thinking about, like, all of the seed oils and preservatives and all these things that are just getting thrown into the food. It's like, what? Yeah. Why? These gums. I'm like, if, if something has more than seven ingredients and it's not organic and I can't pronounce a thing, that's not going in my grocery cart. It is not coming to my house. Yeah, if I can't pronounce a thing, if I can't get it out of my mouth, I yeah. probably shouldn't put it in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I look on these ingredients lists and I'm just like, what is that? What is that? Xanthan gum? Ugh. Talk about inflammation. It causes so much inflammation in your body. 
And what causes disease? Inflammation. Yeah, so we're literally eating ourselves sick. And it's all in the name of profitability. We go right back to that profitability. Like, yeah. You know, I, I could only imagine that the witches were probably like hunted down because they were using like natural remedies and they were like, oh, totally. I'm not going to make money on this. So we yeah. stopped those witches. Yeah. The, the, the patriarchy, the, the, the church was just like, look, we are not going to be able to make this capitalism thing go. Exactly. Yeah. If we have, I mean, if everyone's healthy and just does, lives their own lives. Yeah. 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 So let's bring this back to the apocalypse, right? Full so, circle. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. The planet's changing vibration and it's purging itself of all of the people that really can't be sustained. Yeah. Right? And, and it wants people that care for it. Mm -hmm. that, raise their vibration to match its vibration to help heal it. Yeah. If we are healing ourselves from the inside out, we are now healing the planet. Oh, I love that. Right? Because if we do regenerative farming, now we're bringing all of these nutrients back to the soil that then gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And this planet will just thrive. Yeah. It, you know, it's like, Come the fuck on, people. I know. And, and it's so, it's so like, I love what you said too about how healing ourselves is healing because we are that, right? Like we've, we've diluted ourselves that we're something different, right? right? But yeah. we crawled out of, I think of Gaia, right? So I, I love the Greek myths. I think the Greek myths are fascinating. I think they're, I think they're, they're so much richer than we give them credit for. And one of the things that the Greek, like when you go back to the very early Greek myths about how everything was formed, the first thing that exists, right, is like there's, there's, there was the sea and then there was Tartarus, right? Tartarus is the rocks under the earth. And then Gaia comes and Gaia b exists on top of Tartarus. And I imagine that as like, are, are you familiar with the Gaia hypothesis from, I think, James Loveless? He was this, he was this chemist from like the 1970s. And, and he proposed a hypothesis that all life is a single organism, yeah. right? The single organism, he called it Gaia. And, and I imagine it just as like, if you look at our planet, right? And if you look at probably any planet, at, at the core of the planet, it's like, it's rock and, and that's, and you can't live on rock, right? That's one of the reasons I love Burning Man is that you go to Burning Man and you literally go to the most, there's nothing can live there. You are at, you are at the place where there's nothing. And then you realize how much humans we depend on layers and layers and layers of life, like dirt, vegetation for it. There's so much that we rely on that we don't even think about. We just imagine we're just like, oh, that's just what the world is like. Right. No, that's not what the world is like. There are places on the, in, on earth where that doesn't exist. There are like, that's what Mars is like. The reason that Mars isn't alive is because Mars doesn't have Gaia. Mars doesn't, and there are other reasons for that too, right? But Mars doesn't have this, this living ecosystem that, because the reason why we have a great atmosphere is because we have Gaia exhaling oxygen, right? So we're, we're intimately part of this. And I just imagine it as like this giant green goo that's all over the rocks of our planet and we've been and and Gaia invented us to be the caretakers. Exactly. Right? We're the caretakers. Yeah. And we have really not done a great we've forgotten. And and the good news is we actually did a pretty great job for a long time. Yes. Right? For hundreds of thousands of years we did a really great job and then we invented this thing called capitalism where it was like how can we exploit? How can we take and the thing that is the most gross to me about that is that it's not like capitalism doesn't benefit everyone. No. Capitalism benefits a few people. It benefits a few people, a whole bunch, and then the rest of the people it enslaves, and then it rapes the earth, and, and it doesn't, and it's not, it's not in, and what we should be doing is, because we don't, the earth isn't habitable because the earth is habitable. The earth is habitable because there's this organism that lives on the earth. That's this huge, super organism that's all around the planet. 
that creates the conditions that allows complex life like us to live. And it doesn't have to. That's right. It could, it could not. And I think that in, you know, whatever, whatever COVID was in large part, it was the earth saying y'all back the fuck up or I'll kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I could agree a little bit with that, but we won't go into my theory on that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> we'll save that for a future episode. Yeah, totally. Totally. But like going to the atmosphere, like talking about the chemtrails, like, okay, so we are on this planet where the atmosphere is like perfect condition for us to grow and thrive and all the things. And now they're throwing the chemtrails into the atmosphere, which is basically allowing the sun to come through, but it's trapping everything from going out. And so it's creating like basically a microwave. Yeah, we're getting fried. We're like radiating everything, which is why cancer is like rampant. Another reason, of course, there are mm -hmm. reasons. But like, I am just blown away at like these things happening right in our faces and nobody's doing anything about it. Because it's not convenient to. Yeah. Because I, I really want to be able to go get to New York in five hours. Right. That's important. Yes. It's important for me physically to be 5,000 miles away in five hours. It's insane. It's insane. It is a little bit insane. I mean, we just need to get back to where we know where we came from and who we are and how powerful we are. And then we can just like magically appear where we want to be. I... I am a hundred percent on board. I have, have you seen, have you seen the OA? No. Oh my God. You would love the OA, but in, in the OA, they, they oh, do yeah. these. Yeah. 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 The, the OA where they have like the movements and then they teleport. Yes. I, I want that to happen. Yes. I, that's what, when I think of like pyramids, I have no, I have no backing for this other than this is what I think, which is. There's no way, and maybe we'll we're, we're shift gears a little bit because you turned me on to this show, Resident Alien. Oh, yeah. Oh, my right? God. So I've been thinking about aliens. Number one, I've been thinking about aliens. I'm pretty sure I had a UFO encounter when I was a, a little kid, right? I remember laying on the tramp one night and there were like, there was no sound, but there were all of these lights flashing all over our field. I have no idea what that was. It, it, it looked like, hell, it looked like, it looked like, spotlights from helicopters but there was no sound there was it was totally quiet yeah and if i were an alien i would totally go check out the polygamous comp like, yeah, i'd be like this, this looks interesting what's going on right here right yeah but i i'm i've been fascinated with space my whole life i'm i i want to i want to go to space like i want to go i want to go visit another planet so badly and when i think about the the, the, the size of the universe, how long the universe has been around and the complexities and the difficulties of interstellar, like how long it takes to physically go from one place to another place. It seems obvious to me that the, there is interstellar travel and the way that we do interstellar travel isn't by going from here to here. It's by here is already there. So it's, just, it's, it's teleportation seems like the obvious thing. And then I look at, I had this, Burning Man is like my thing. I fucking love that place. This is the third time I brought it up and you're welcome, you guys, because I, I will continue. Burning Man, I think, side note, I think that is the apocalypse playground. Like that's, yes, that's what the reason why we do that as humans is that we we're going to that extreme environment to play in this it's so that we can be ready for these new, these new changes. Yeah. And I had this experience and for most of Burning Man, I was not sober. I was on, all sorts of things. But for the first three days of Burning Man, I was stone cold sober. I did nothing. And literally all I did is I, I went out, I got, I arrived my first day and there was, it was mine. Cause I was like this polygamous kid. I'd never seen anything like this. And then all of a sudden I'm in the most hedonist, like the most crazy place on earth. I left my camp. I arrived at my camp and I just went out to go for a walk. I wasn't even, I was like, I had a jacket. I had like a flashlight and like some water. And I was like, I'm just going to go for a walk, you guys. And I wandered back into camp 36 hours later. Oh my God. I had just been wandering 
completely sober for hours. And one of the things that happened is I, I ended up in one of the camps builds this huge pyramid, huge pyramid out of like scaffolding and stuff. And I wandered into there like early morning. I was pretty tired. So I found like this couch. I laid down. I kind of like fell asleep a little bit and I woke up and they were doing a sound bath. And while they were doing the sound bath, I just started meditating. So I'm meditating. I'm listening to the sound bath and the shape of the pyramid, like the four corners, the actual shape of it. And then the way that it kind of goes up, it took my consciousness and it channeled me up and then out the top and it blasted me off somewhere. So cool. I was in a totally different place. Well, I don't even know how long. And then it, and then I came back down. It felt like a, like a DMT or like a, like a psychedelic experience. And I was totally sober. I love that. And I think, I think that that's a lot of what those things were for, right? When I think about why did we make pyramids? Why did we do that? I think that there's something about the extreme focus of energy here that can get us to other places. I don't know how that works. I'll leave that for the scientists. But yeah. that, I think that's how we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like there's something about sacred geometry. There's something about sacred geometry, yeah. And about the, the structure and about, you know, building things in a, in a way that, and then also just the power of our minds, right? To, to, yes. like, to intentionally, like you, you look at the things that they, that, that really intense meditators like monks can do when they are in extreme, like fucking, you can try to stab them and they have fucking iron skin. Yes. They get like all of this stuff. And, and then you tie that into a structure that supports it. Um, I just think there's a lot. And then also we now know that aliens are real because they finally stopped lying to us. Yeah, right. Yeah. They tried to like slip that in. They were like, while the world's ending, by the way, we've been lying about aliens the whole time. You know, they tell us so much stuff. And we don't see it as reality. Yeah. Right? They slip things in and it's so crazy that they're like, well, we told you guys. So like. Trust us. Yeah. 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 I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm, yeah. I'm excited for, there's so much, so much kind of coming. One of the, so we played with these cards before, right? Apocalypse. Yeah, I love so that. one of the, one of the definitions of this card that they, so this is the apocalypsis card. They define an apocalypse as the unveiling of a truth uh -huh. and the wreckage that comes from the unveiling of that truth. Yeah. And I think that, that that's a big, like, that's a big part of what is going on here yeah. with, with, especially with like aliens is we've, we've been lying. We've been pretending like that's not true for so long. And now there's, now it's obvious. And yeah. then and I love too how kind of everyone's response to that was like, like everyone was like, oh, we can't tell people that aliens are real because they'll freak out. It'll destroy them. They won't even be able to handle it. And then they admit it. And everyone's like, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Like we've, of course. It's the egoic of us to think we're the only one. Right. In this massive universe thing. Yeah. Or even in this planet, right? Like. I think about that some, like we, we have maps, like we have maps of the United States and we draw this whole thing. We're like, this is all the United States. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's not. The United States is actually a couple of dots all over. The United States is a couple of dots and then lines between those dots. And then what out there, like if you've flown across the, it's huge. So much. So much unpopulated space. And we're like, oh yeah, that's all the United. No, it's not. That's like a little bit on the coast and a couple of things in the middle and then some lines connecting it. And that's it. That's what we actually have control over. And we think that we're like the top dogs and we're so powerful. And we, and we're like, we, we do everything. And, and in some ways we are, we are pretty, pretty powerful, but we're also so tiny. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We've unpacked a lot. We did unpack a lot. We are, we are about a time. Any, are there any kind of final thoughts about the apocalypse, about preparing for, about kind of thriving in the apocalypse or aliens or anything, witchiness that you want to, you want to share before we wrap? Yeah. So I think that we're going to have to have another conversation about water because like, oh, yeah. that's a huge part of this too. 
I mean, what is it like nine seventy five to ninety percent of the planet's water? Yeah, same as our bodies. Yeah, and we know we know as we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the surf the the floor of the ocean. What is down there, y'all? Yeah, yeah. So I I think we should save that for another conversation because that is huge. Hell yeah. I have so much cool stuff to share about water. Ooh, I'm so excited. We'll have a we'll have a wa an apocalypse water conversation in the yeah. future. Yeah. Cause I mean, obviously, when we get destroyed anyways, we're gonna get, you know, covered in water again. We're gonna get flooded. Yeah. I mean, we're all it's already happening. The ice caps are melting, the sea levels are rising. Like, yeah. damn it, the this is the thing that that always makes me a little bit a little bit annoyed is the 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 Bible thumpers are kind of right. Like the flood, I mean they're wrong, but they're also like they're also like they're the the flood. Here we are, we're flooding again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not though. I, Utah's going to be fine. Utah's going to be beachfront. It's going to be great. It's great. <laughs> it's going to fill up. California is going to be flooded, but it'll like just get really nice and I'll have a nice beachfront house pretty soon. So. Great. It'll be it'll be good. Well, we don't know about Austin. Austin is Austin. How close is Austin to the ocean? You know, we do have you know down like Galveston. It's a couple hours, so okay, it's, it's like pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty. You could you could Austin might become beachfront too. Yeah, who knows what's gonna happen here, Texas? <laughs> I don't know that Austin could get if any cooler, but if Austin became like the beach, that would be pretty cool. Really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Stephanie, if people want, to, are you, do you, like, how could, if people wanted to follow, if people want to learn more about you, is, are, is there places where they could go to, to do that? I reject social media. Hell yeah. So, so you cannot follow her on social media? I have right? social media, but like you can find me there, but you're not going to actually find me there. Yeah. I'm going to be responding to you. I'm not posting very often. Yeah. I actually, I created this fancy survivalist. So that, that was like, I've got the name and I was going to do something with it. But then I'm like, I just don't approve of this way of being. Yeah. So. So if you want, if you want to learn more about Stephanie or connect with Stephanie, you're going to have to do it in the real world, y'all. Outside of the matrix, you will have to find her somewhere in Austin and, and get a, a witchy rune rating and go to her she shed. Yeah. And you could probably find me at Kuya. Cause at Kuya. I, yeah, K-U-Y-A. I basically live there. It's so rad. Next time you come, I have to take you there. Oh, hell yeah. I, I, I'm down for that. I want to I wanna get down to Austin quick. It's a cold plunge. I go there three times a week for that. I just did, I just did a sauna cold plunge. And I was, I was with some friends in Boulder. And we did like like an hour straight of sauna yeah. cold plunge. Yeah. It felt amazing incredible incredible I, I can't i can't believe that we don't have more access to that, to that kind of because That's it's so good for you and it's so easy like it's literally just a box and fire yes it's not that hard no awesome well stephanie thanks so much for coming on i loved having this conversation with you thanks for uh giving us some some cool skills for vibing the apocalypse Everybody, just a quick reminder on the show. So if you are in local in Utah and you want to come to my come to comedy church Sunday, April 7th, that's two Sundays from now. It's going to be at the at the Redemption Bar and Grill in Harriman, Utah, 730 p.m. And if you use the code Benjamin, you can get two dollars, a whole two dollars off the ticket price. And you can probably buy half a beer with that. So thanks, y'all. Thanks for coming out. Stephanie, good chatting. <laughs>